Hello again everyone, uh, thank you for watching. Today we're going to do something that's kind of fun, maybe a little scary, and uh, we're going to have some uh, fun painting watercolors today. Um, I'm going to do a, maybe two paintings if I have the time, but uh, I'm going to do one for sure. One I've never done before, uh, an object uh, that uh, I've never tried this subject before, so uh, that ought to be fun. Um, I'm going to uh, show you now the uh, scene that we're going to paint. It's an interesting old truck that's sort of in dilapidated condition, but it's sitting around some barns, and uh, we'll uh, see what we can do with that. I've never painted an old vehicle like this. I've uh, never painted a vehicle before, actually. Um, so uh, we'll see how that works. So that's the scary part for me, um, but you'll have fun watching, I'm sure. And uh, I'm going to talk a minute, in a minute about uh, the sketch and about the different sizes of paper that we'll be using and uh, how to get your grid on the uh, paper. Um, I will give you a shot here of the image with the grid over it so you can get an idea if you can make your screen full size and do a screen capture. Um, you can save this as a JPEG and then uh, use it as a guide to do your own sketch. Um, if you know how to save a screen, you typically do the, uh, on a, a, a Microsoft operating system, use the function key and there's something that says print screen and that usually saves the uh, screen image to a clipboard and then you can paste it into an email um, or into another application where you can save the image as a as a JPEG file and use that as your sketching guide. Okay, um, let's see, I want to go back and show you now the second uh, photograph that we may do. If I have time, it's one that I did an oil painting of <clears throat> and I've had several people ask me about um, painting snow, mountains and snow in watercolor particularly. Uh, it's a little more difficult in watercolor sometimes uh, just because you're trying to paint around things and um, the white paper becomes the snow unless it has shadows so if we have time we'll do that I have that sketch already prepared and uh, we can uh, get to work on that um, after we do the uh, this beat up old truck so um, let me talk about the sketch here is the sketch that I have uh, on my easel right now it's a, a little bit complicated and it's not something you're going to do very quickly, but um, I want to show it to you and if you want to take a snapshot of this screen save, um, I'll leave this up here for a few seconds. Um, when this broadcast is over and I get the uh, video edited, I will be putting these sketches out on my website so you can actually download the pictures and, uh, and use it for your own painting after the fact. Um, I also have a sketch of the second painting that we're going to try to do and I will, uh, if I have time, I'll get to that and we'll do that one too. I think that one might go fairly quickly so that's the reason I was uh, trying to use the second uh, a painting. Um, I also have um, my um, value map. It's kind of a dumb looking thing but uh, at least it gives me some idea that I want to have this truck in a uh, light, um, lighter color and the sky behind it lighter and leave some nice darks around the top of that barn behind there. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go up to the uh, easel now and uh, start talking to you about that. If you have any questions, um, if you want to ask me any questions, please type them in uh, capital letters so I can see them. I have a computer up by my easel and I will be uh, looking at that as we go along. So let me uh, go to the board now to the easel and we will uh, start talking about different sizes of paper and aspect ratios and some of that stuff. I have put together a little um, uh, extra uh, piece of paper here basically with uh, some notes on it that I wanted to share with you on 
paper size and uh, aspect ratio and how that relates to a grid that you may make to uh, put over your image before you trace it or before you uh, copy it. And uh, so let me zoom in on this here very quickly and we'll go through this. Um, if you're painting, as we will be painting today on 16 by 20 uh, paper, um, I usually use a 4 by 5 grid. And uh, that means that each square on a 16 by 20 paper or canvas, uh, you have 4 inch squares. So when you put your vertical lines and your horizontal lines, just measure off 4 inches and uh, that will give you the 4 by 5 grid. Um, that's also known as a 1.25 aspect ratio. Um, the same aspect ratio, almost slightly different, but very close, 11 by 14, which I paint oil paintings on a lot, um, is um, 4 by 5 grid, but the squares there are about 2 and 3 quarters inch uh, square, 2.8 I think it is actually, but it's hard to get 2.8 on most uh, tape measures, but you can use 2.5. I actually have a little template that I've created and I bring to my classes and let people use that to uh, lay in the vertical and horizontal lines before they do the sketch. That's a 1.27 aspect ratio. And the second painting we'll do today, if I have time, is on a 12 inch by 20 inch piece of uh, watercolor paper. And to get a 4 by 5 grid on that paper, you'll need a 3 inch by 4 inch rectangle. So you just do the same thing. You divide it up uh, horizontally by 4 inches and divide it up vertically by uh, 3 inches and you'll have a 12 by 20. That's a 1.67 aspect ratio. And uh, that's much closer to some of the, the new TV uh, sizes that we see, the, the, the widescreen TV and that sort of thing. Um, so I just want to give you that as a little idea of how I lay out some of my paintings, how I lay out some of the uh, grids that I use to, uh, use to create my sketches from. Let me peel this off of here. I have my tracing paper on here that's uh, left over from my sketch. And uh, so this is the sketch I used for this old beat up truck. And uh, so it's uh, going to be an interesting thing to paint. I also have the photos up above that uh, I showed you before, the, uh, the, the, the photo of the truck and uh, have my value map there as well. So uh, this I always take off. I have a uh, transfer paper, a graphite transfer paper that I put under this so I can trace over this in red ink so I know where I've traced and uh, trace that onto my watercolor paper. So I just peel this off now and I have left my sketch. Now the sketch itself is a little too dark really and so I've been using this kneaded eraser and I've already started sort of lightening up some of this so that it's not going to show through this graphite's not going to show through too much uh, when I put watercolor on it. I don't want it to look like a um, sometimes you do a, a painting like an ink you'll do a you'll do the sketch in ink and then you'll put watercolor over it. It's called a line and wash. Um, that's not what I'm trying to do here. So I want to take off some of this graphite with this kneaded eraser. <clears throat> Unfortunately, when I do that, it makes it so light that <clears throat> on, these cam on the camera when I'm doing a, a video, it's hard for you to see the, the sketch. But it uh, leaves a much better painting when we're finished. And uh, so I'm going to just hit this a few more times. I've been over most of this already, so I didn't want to take a lot of time, but I did want to show you how to get some of this graphite off by just using a kneaded eraser. It's really soft and supple. Uh, and uh, you just fold the, the dirty areas in on top of itself, and it just keeps having more and more life. And these kneaded erasers last for a long time, usually until they get so stiff that you can't knead them anymore, and you can't uh, bend them. When they stop becoming pliable, you kind of have to throw them away and get a new one. Um, okay, I think that's what I want to do. It's probably still too dark in some areas, but I'm going to let it go with that. Um, I hope that still comes across on the video so you can see the uh, most of that sketch when I look at the 
the video here I see it's the very light and I want to set this so that it's you can see the bottom of it here I got a little adjuster that I can use to help my camera get in the right position okay um, that being said let me see if I want to move it slightly that way okay I think it's centered and hopefully uh, that's good for you and like I said that sketch is going to be very light so let me go over very quickly the brushes and the paints with my watercolor set up I typically use a set of uh, Sterling Edwards brushes and uh, he has these uh, bristle brushes that are uh, large medium and small and uh, very short stiff bristles and they make some nice blending they also are good to put water on but they do good for glazing as well um, I also have a couple nylon brushes flats a, number, a one inch and a half inch flat I have uh, three rounds here that are Sterling Edwards uh, design also a number 12 a number 8 and a uh, number 4 round so I'll have those paint then I also have another little rigger here a script liner that uh, <clears throat> is by American painter I'll probably use that I have some other brushes here that I may use depending on what uh, what I get into with this but uh, that's what I'm going to start with and I'm going to see if uh, we can get going on this um, should go around and tell you the paints I've told you these before um, but I want to make sure you know what they are these are my Mary blue paints and uh, they're very transparent watercolors and I really love them uh, this is a neutral tint this blue is a cyan blue we have ultra blue we have ultraviolet have Car crimson lake very similar to a lizard crimson um, garnet lake cadmium red burnt sienna raw sienna yellow ochre On the outside row I have cupric green it's very similar to thalo green and I have um, golden lake um, limon yellow which is sort of yellow with green in it and I have primary yellow inside row I have burnt umber sap green Auvignon orange primary red magenta and still the green brown so you see the the, the way those colors look they're very uh, soft um, and they have a nice texture on top of them they reconstitute very well I have a, a little bit of light red over here a Grumbacher paint and it's all cracked and uh, a lot of times paints like that watercolors uh, do that and uh, they don't reconstitute well they leave lumps sometimes in your in your painting in your paints and uh, they don't make a, a good uh, a good painting uh, mixture usually because they leave lumps in there so all right let's get going on this uh, old barn and truck here and uh, I want to put my palette over a certain area of the painting so that as I uh, I can move it around here I have a little device that lets me move it around I'll keep it in the lower left corner and uh, while you're watching also you can if you send me a note um, if you see the I'm painting underneath the palette so you can't see if I get painting over and over in this area here let's see I guess it's this area here uh, you won't be able to see what I'm painting because the palette will cover it I need to move my palette and I can do that very easily sometimes I don't think about it I just start painting and get lost in the painting so if you see that and can throw me in a, a note capital letters there tell me I'm covering the you can't see the painting for the palette let me know I'm gonna wet a little bit of this upper sky we're gonna start with the sky just clear water and uh, just start putting it in uh, the paper we're painting on I told you the size already it's 16 by 20 um, and it is Fabriano Artistico white and it is 300 pound cold press um, 300 pound is a, a nice heavy paper it sort of stands up on its own pretty much um, and um, it holds a lot of water and uh, so the the, the uh, photo that I'm working from didn't have any sky in it at all it just had a bunch of trees this was a real close shot of trees and uh, behind uh, these barns so I'm going to throw in some ultra blue and uh, 
just throwing a little bit of light sky back here. Uh, nothing too exotic. Throw maybe a little violet in there and change the color a little bit. And uh, keep it fairly loose and simple. And because it's wet, it'll uh, just sort of blend and merge together and make a nice little sky back there. Okay, with watercolors, that's why they, they go fairly quickly sometimes until you get into a lot of detail. And so I uh, wanted to... Um, maybe have saved time to paint another painting um, if I can and uh, if I have time to do that I will okay there's the sky so much for that didn't take much to do that sky pick up a little water here you don't want these beads to start running down your paper I do paint vertically there's a, a few number of painters that uh, do paint in a vertical uh, fashion like this but uh, not a lot of painters do that um, I'm gonna throw just while I got this here I'm gonna throw in just some things that look like maybe some trees uh, in there throw a little greenery there because I'm gonna have some green in the grass lower here and I want to sort of echo that color in the sky so let's put a little bit of uh, green maybe some things about here that sort of just stick up look like some trees back here in the behind these um, it's old barn don't want it to be uh, too strong but just sort of very light I'm just kind of touching in some things here leaving it look a little Might even be some low pine trees sitting back there somewhere. I don't know. All right, that's just uh, want to lighten that sky up, and uh, I don't want it to be top heavy dark like the photograph. Okay, so much for that little job. Moving on, we're going to just kind of come down the painting here, hopefully, and. Uh, Paint as we go. I'm going to pick up some uh, some of my still to grain browns here. You can also make some uh, nice gray colors by adding some uh, blue to your browns. You can either use um, a burnt sienna and ultra blue to get a gray. Put a little bit of that in here. Let you see that um, a certain color of grays. And you can also mix this still to grain brown with some ultra blue and get a little bit different color gray. So our barns are sort of gray and brown combination. So I'm going to just sort of come in here and just put in a big old color like this. Change the color, put a little red in it. Pick up more of that still the grain brown. Leave a little bit of a border here at the top. Um, let's see, this comes all the way down to about here. Top of this. More blue in it. Pick up some other colors, change the color. Goes way out here. This barn goes way across. Keep changing up the color. Don't put it all in one. I'm painting around the top of this. 
truck here. See, this is all side of the truck right here. Okay, a little more blue in there, change the color. That blue was a little too strong, but I've got a big old saw blade here that I have to paint in. Um, so I'm just going to put this color right over it and we'll come back and make that saw blade show up after a bit. Um, what else? Let's get a little more gray in here maybe. Put a little window we've got so I'm painting just wet on dry the only thing I did wet on wet was this uh, sky painting around more of this truck here room on this another window back here okay we're gonna brighten this up pretty significantly I think um, if you have any questions uh, as you're watching here you can actually type in the chat window and ask me a question please put it in caps uh, I'd like to keep it distinct from anything else that might be going on in there in the chat room um, let me see, I'm just going to pull this down. This goes getting too low there. Um, and let's pick up some more brown on the bottom. Warm it up on the bottom a little bit. Okay. This is the bottom of the uh, building back here. It's got some warmth in it. At some point I'll stop looking at the photograph and just sort of go from the painting. Um, you have to sort of do that sometimes to Here, I want to just pull down some more grays. And um, it just sort of goes off the paper down here. Okay. Um, so I'm getting a, a lot of that 
barn filled in back there. We'll come back and be putting in some more stuff here later, but uh, uh, this old barn door has uh, paint around it as well here. Paint it in while I'm tires there's a little bit of a area this is all gray over here just a little bit of gray right in there door handle stick out Okay, room for a window. We got this area up the top here that's much darker uh, around this area here in the eave or um, gable of this building. I'm going to pick up some more blue and a little bit of ultra tint and start coming in here and putting another layer that's not real dark. Here, I want it to be a little darker, even darker than that, if I can get it darker than that. Pick up some blue and red. there too much water there anytime you can stop running now there buddy <laughs> I have to set, soak it up with my paper towel all right a bit too wet give me some more a bit more here, let's see. Pull it up. Okay. A little bit in there in this window will probably scrub that out. I think I'm gonna just sort of gray that down anyway. The windows are this other window needs a little, just a little gray in it as well. And even back inside here, there's a very dark section. Okay, so far I'm painting buildings, which are things I'm familiar with and things I've done before. Um, this roof over here has a, a rustic look. Let's see if I can get a rust color here. Combination over here like this. Change the color, pull it down. Darker in here.
All right. Now, a little more dark over here, this area. Actually gets fairly dark as well. And just sort of bleeds down to nothing here. Take some water and soften it. Okay, that's sort of out of the light. Um, even this area under the here is just slightly darker. It's got some shadow on it, so I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow in here. Across there. And clear water on the brush and just sort of soften those edges a little bit like that. Okay. We've been going for 15 minutes or so, maybe that's uh, 20 minutes on this painting. Um, I think I need to come back now. While I got this dark going here, I'm going to come back and put some more in my uh, in this uh, roof up here, another eave up here. Pick some blue, red. Probably could throw some of that Cooper green in there. Green, red, and blue, like a Viridian green, Lizarin crimson, or Crimson Lake, and blue give you a very, very dark brown. And you can make it sort of to the blue side if you put more blue in it, and make it to the red side if you put more red in it. But let's see up here. We've got an area. It's like very change it a little bit. Eve is all really dark under here. color here. Put a dry brush on there. Helps give us a little bit of a wood type look. Okay. We can come back and put some graffiti over that uh, and we'll uh, make it look a little better after a bit. If I don't forget, okay, um, let's see, I'm going to take just a, well, I got this dark color in my palette. I'm going to come back here and take a little number four round and sort of put in a few, a few things here to give me a, Make it look like we've got something going on up here. I do have a, a bit of a darker uh, mark here on the eve. I don't know if I can show that, if it'll be different.
there and a few dark marks here. Okay. And we have a bunch of little things here that sort of give us the perspective of this barn. Throw in some darks here to sort of identify These are pretty important little marks because they help give you the perspective of this barring going back. Um, got a sort of a shadow in here where this the board that something sticks out. Okay, over here, let's see, we got a few more things. There's some sort of door or something over here that's... All right, that's the kind of graffiti type stuff that we would put in. Put it in later, but you can also put it in now if you want. Um, kind of up to you how you like to uh, sometimes when you got the dark paint in your palette it's a good time to do it Take some grays and some take some of that and take a little bit of this darker color and sort of it's a light glaze over that door. Okay, all right, how are we doing? I think I lost my microphone cover here. Hold on one second and I'll put it back on. There may be some scratching and a little air cover for my microphone sometimes it falls off all right so now let's see where we are Another paper towel okay um, still have a lot of good darks in this palette I'm gonna pull up my flat brush here I think I'm gonna get this uh, half inch flat and I'm going to see if I can get some really dark things for these windows
All right, that's a nice dark for that window. Got another window over here behind this truck. I'm gonna throw in some And then we have a little bit of this is the rear view mirror of this truck a rear view window so it's kind of showing through some of that barn behind there okay now how are we doing There, okay. Try to get this a uh, little frame around this window here. Similar type thing here, maybe. Don't need much. Okay. Um, color that I had there for that brown that lost it um, right around this window I left some of it off I should have over a little further I think I don't have that color yet if I can get close to it maybe I may have to change my that's not it and have more blue Pretty close. Nope, it may dry, it dries lighter. Watercolor always dries about 20% lighter, maybe 30% lighter. So we can pull that together. Okay, I'll just sort of another little light glaze over this to sort of blend that out so it doesn't look so obvious that I painted in the wrong place there. There's clear water there. Okay. All right. Um, this old Use my darks. Okay. All right. Step back, see what it looks like from a distance. This eave up here on this is definitely standing out. It's too bright, so let's see if we can tone it down just a little. Yeah, I'll put a little bit of some color in there to tone it down a little bit. Darken that part of the roof. Okay. Um, one thing I see, I got to make a little bit of a distinction here between the this part of the building, which actually comes out here, a little bit too dark, maybe there, but has to show a separation of from the building behind it, or I've got a problem. Just pull it down, make a nice little. Soft edge there. Blend that into the 
shadow. Okay, now it looks like I've got the building behind it. I want to bring that on down here as well so that I have a distinction of one building in front of the other. I'm pulling it apart here. There we go. All right. Now, that just helped me separate this shape in the back from this shape on the side and foreground. Okay, um, there is a little bit of a uh, door type of thing here. It's about, oh, it's actually pretty high up. It's actually about right up here. Probably too soon to do that. It's too wet. I just painted that. I don't want to go back in there. All right, let's see what we got. I need a drink. All right, I think it's time to maybe start tackling this truck. Um, let's see if I can get some, clean out this pallet, get some of this junk out of here. So if you don't like trucks or vehicles, don't despair. I will be painting other things. I'll probably come back and do a floral scene of some sort maybe next month. Or not next month. Uh, next time I paint watercolors, which will be June, my June class. I may do one in between there that's not a live class. But uh, let's see. I need some orange here. I'm going to try this cad red. See if I can get a color that's pretty close there. I want to, if I want to gray that down, I'm going to probably have to put in a little bit of my uh, violet. So if you're looking at the palette here, you can see I'm using cad red and a little bit of my ultraviolet, and I'm starting to get a color that's close to that truck. Uh, I'm going to come up here with my big brush and see what I can do. I'm going to put a little more, pick up a little uh, burnt sienna in there to give myself a little bit of a rusty, more of a rusty color.
this going here with cad red and a bit of lavender. around some things here <clears throat> some little emblem on the hood I gotta paint around um, go back and put in some some little things over here on the side to paint around another emblem here I think this truck is called a Diamond T, like a 1950-something vintage Diamond T, I think I read. So I sort of called this painting a diamond in the rough. This side's a little bit darker because it's a little bit shaded. Separate the fender from the. See, this is the fender here, so I'm painting. Lighten it up a little bit. back and put in some this old fender is really kind of beat up here getting underneath my palette I am slightly there you go folks thank you okay let's come across here like this down and make sure I don't paint over something which I just painted over There's a little chrome thing sitting here on the front of this truck. I'm going to paint around them if I can, if I think about it. Don't forget. So this is all more front fender stuff here. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> All right. We're starting to get a little bit of the look of this. <clears throat> I get hot under these lights, folks. I'm uh, breathing heavy and sweating like crazy here. Okay. Over here, let's see. We've got some rusty spots in between. There's a little bit of rust in here. 
Um, and then run across this bottom beam right in here. There's some so for here's the same part of the fender. Okay. Leaving some junk up here to sort of look like a rust or it's all kind of rust on this truck. I don't want to paint it as rough as it looks, but it certainly has some. Okay, there's that. Another fender over there on the right side before we get rid of this paint. I better put this fender in. Get some water there. Thank you folks for your comments. Love having you here. I'm glad you're tuning in. Hope you like this painting. Hope you can give it a try. You may not like to paint trucks or vehicles, but uh, certainly they're a way to challenge yourself to do something. I've never done a truck before, so you're seeing me struggle with this for the first time. Never done a vehicle of any kind, actually. Most of my paintings are, are landscapes and fender over here. At least I know what the parts of the some of these vehicles are. Leave my headlight there. Okay. All right. Starting to look pretty good. Where else? Okay, so now I've got to pick up some of this neutral tint and start uh, putting in just a little bit of this bumper now. We've got a big old bumper that goes across here. About like that. It's got a little rust on the bottom of it. So we'll just sort of bleed that together. There's some area back here that might sort of bleed into it. There's another little chrome something out of there that comes over. Now just clear water and see if I can sort of just pull that together. Yeah. All right. That's not as dark as it is in the photograph, but I'm taking a few liberties here. can't just make it identical to the photograph. You sort of have to Okay. Oh, I see a little bit of that red on this tire down here. Pick me up a round brush here. I'm going to get my number uh, eight round. See if I can put a little more of 
this uh, reddish color. This, this tire has a, an orange rim that's sort of dirty and yucky looking. So I'll see if I can get something in there. I can figure out what goes where. Okay, so it's this. more orange in there. Okay, this little brush is letting me get into some fine places here. Okay, change the color a little bit, get a little darker down here. Okay, something like that. Um, I got another really dark area back in under this fender. So I'm going to go see if I can pick up some more of my that really dark color I had before. Blue, crimson, cupric green. Back in here we've got a pretty dark area. And it's sort of the same, slightly lighter maybe. I don't know if I should get in. That's too, it's too much. I'm gonna hold off on that. Let's see. Let's get in here and put in some of these areas. And down at the bottom, there's a few more. Okay. Now, what else we got? We got more of this gray. Let's see here. Windshield, windshield wipers. Okay, I'm starting to zero in on this thing now. I'm going to go ahead and see if this is, I don't think that's dry enough. It might be. Start up here. And then we start thinning it out a little bit. The color of this tire is going to be lighter.
while I got that color going, I'm going to come over here and do this tire. Then it gets very dark back in here. <clears throat> Okay, folks, let's see. We've been going about an hour. I need to make a slight adjustment here on my computer. I'm going to stop. <clears throat> So that I have a different file. I actually found that in my editing, sometimes my two hour long videos, when I edit them, for some reason the sound and the video get out of sync after about an hour and 30 minutes. So I have decided to try an experiment with this one to break it up into two, two video files and see if that works. Um, are we seeing the bottom of this? Let me back up here. I don't I think I've got you zoomed in too close there. Okay, let's see here. Let me move it down just a little. Get my camera control's working. Okay. It looks pretty good on video. I think it actually usually always does look better on video than up close and personal for some reason. All right, now, what are we gonna do? We got some more little things I wanna put in under here. We got a few little, <clears throat> I guess they're shadows. We have some uh, these chrome pieces and there's a sort of a dark shadow in here. There and we have little things like that to help define it. Something there and we have. jobs here there's a shadow there this whole windshield has a sort of a black <coughs> rim around it oh my Still. that under here we have a, a shadow
Okay, that's starting to look. Back here, we've got some very dark. It's not quite dark enough. Beam here that's got a shadow on it. <clears throat> then we've got some more. Use this dark color I got built up here, and we're putting in our. Behind these tires, we've got a thing that sort of looks like this. I'm just looking at shapes right now. I'm not even trying to paint anything specific. Um, there's a little footboard or running board or something that sticks out here like this. All right. <clears throat> See here, how are we doing? In these tires, we got a sort of a connector of some kind in there, and then this whole side of the tire is really dark. There, and the inside of this other tire is very dark. find it. It's like right in here. Okay, that's that side. Come back and Darken this a little more. Okay, and the front side of those tires are going to be similar color, but they're going to be lighter. So I'm going to put more water in. Sort of put it down this way. This one. Okay, a couple of tires back there. This tire actually continues around. But this is really dark under here. I'm going to put some really dark stuff under there. Um, Grasses or shadows and all kinds of stuff here that I'm going to work on. Let's see. There's a um, sort of a beam back there that is the back of this truck. I think we'll get it very light right here. Just sort of do that. Okay. It looks pretty decent. <clears throat> I'm going to come up here and do a little, put some clear water in this windshield. And treat this almost like <clears throat> reflected water. Because that's really what it is. It's sort of a reflection of a little bit of what's behind it, but mostly what's in front of it. So we've got some. Uh, I don't know, some purplish type things that sort of streak down like this. A 
few more over here. Try that brush out and see if I can sort of blend it more. Keep the bristles together, I'll be okay. <coughs> Good. Let me take a little bit of this and the hood ornament and just a little bit in this logo. Then we start coming down here and putting in some show this chrome off. Such as it is, it's pretty well beat up. So I'm just sort of hitting the bottom and <clears throat> let it blend and blur up to the top, soften the top edge if I can. I don't have a hard line there. If I can get rid of that hard line, just some clear water. Take a little more and put it over here. brush. I think maybe I can have a little better success with a round brush, maybe. Just some. All right, this one's going to have some more. These headlights have some color in them, not much. There, there's a couple of, these lights have uh, Supposed to be one over here. I think I missed it. Somehow it fits in. Up here, these little lights got similar types of things going on. Just leave them like that. Come back and just touch them with a little water and sort of blend around them. This window just a little shadow at the top. Okay, it's same over here. Just pull it down a little bit there. Okay, I've got another piece of chrome here on the side. This little door handle. These lights have a bit of a ring around them here. If 
I'm just going to throw in a few things here to sort of give it just a little more texture and a little more. So this stuff is all dented up and beat up. Let's see now, I'll step back, take a look. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, this little piece of chrome here, I'm gonna sort of separate it from that window. Doesn't take much, just a little bit of <clears throat> dark color and then just sort of blend it with a clear, clear water. Hit these guys again. <clears throat> Now we've got some greens. I want to echo, start echoing a little bit of this green. We've got some green grass back here. A lot of, a lot of leaves and stuff on the ground. Let's see if there's any other fine detail work I want to put in there. Maybe there is. I can put in some more, uh, a few more. Some lines back here. I told you I had that old saw blade sitting there that I haven't painted in yet. Do I want to do it? Uh. Paint the inside of this thing. Didn't take long to put that little saw blade in there. Oh, gonna have a hole in the middle. Okay. Now, a couple of uh, I'm gonna highlight these little uh, windshield wipers here. Another one over here. more little things and just sort of blow them with your finger. Um, over here we got a few more little, little items that we can help delineate some of this fender work with. Over here, same thing. Right now, I think it's grass and lawn time. I think I've just about got everything out of here I need. Get rid of this. Well, folks, if you want to hang around, 
after I finish this, I've got another one I can do. I don't know how quickly I can get it done, but I can certainly get it done in an hour. I'm not done with this one yet, but I uh, had that second one I showed you earlier that I may want to try to put on here. I'll give you two for the price of one today. Um, I'll take my little water in here and just sort of wet this down so I get some way to get the paint to flow really easy. It's really dark under here. Put too much water in there, I'll end up with diluting it. Okay, so we want some green grass and we want some leaves and whatever else we can put on this ground back here. down here now see if we can get some more leaves here let's get some of this orange and brown and burnt sienna Throwing this on sort of fast, folks, but uh, basically I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Um, take some more of this green, a little orange, maybe. Okay, we have some shadows here. We have to put in a few shadows from this truck. Um, over here like this. Some dark, dark. Similar color, we're going to add a little dark. Let me this uh, 
neutral tint to this and we're going to come in here and put in a very dark layer under here. Okay, we have a few, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know what these are, sticks or stones or who knows what they are. Um, okay, let me take one more quick look here and see if I'm missing any I can do to fine-tune it just a little. Um, do see one area that could use just a little bit of darkening around this door handle. Like right in here. Probably too much. I'm putting my hand on the painting. Okay, folks, I'm thinking the only other thing I can do that's always fun to do in some watercolors like this is to get your brush full of some runny paint. I probably need a smaller brush than that. I'll do some splattering here. paint's really nice and runny you can kind of hit it on your hand and it will just sort of kind of loosens up everything here one thing we didn't do was put in some little tire tracks here that were enough I'll keep mess with it I'll make it worse good old dark 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 color runny kind of helps make that thing look old and beat up even back here we could put on some on this door Okay, that's all I intend to do there. And I think I'm going to take a break now for about 10 minutes or less. And I'm going to change my board over. Um, let me get this off of here so you can uh, see the full picture. Hope you like that. Um, my little thing will say 15 minute break, but I'm only going to take. 10 minutes. It's 25 till 3 by my clock. I'll be back in 10 minutes. This is the painting we're going to do. It's uh, called Glacier Lake. <clears throat> I did it uh, in February in oils. And uh, I wanted to do it in watercolors, but I decided to do it in oils first. And I thought I would make this available for all the people that uh, like the uh, watercolor classes. and. Uh, to see how to paint snow in uh, on mountains. So I'll get my microphone set up here again. I lost my sound. The 
called a noise guard, I guess, or something it's called. Okay. Let me flip this back now. Okay, here's my new setup. It's about quarter till, and we're going to start. Try to do that painting I just showed you a picture of. And I'm not thinking it's going to take a long time, but you never know. I could get into something that takes a lot longer than I thought. Okay, so I'm going to uh, start here with some clear water. Get my brush out. And I also want to make sure I've got a lot of this <coughs> erased as much as possible. So I can have minimal graphite on the paper. You're not going to be able to see this sketch at all, I'm sure. Um, Eraser is just about destroy that sketch. I can still see enough lines to help me paint where I want to paint, <clears throat> which is the goal. All right, clear water top. I've got this thing ready to go. I think it's pretty well lined up. I'm looking at the uh, video feed. Oh, I want to put my uh, palette on here again for you. And I want it over here to start with. And let's get it wet. There's a Right here, you can't see this, but I can just see it. I'm going to dry this paper where I put the water. Then I've got another mountain I don't want to paint over. Okay, so I dried that off a little bit. Now I'm going to go back and just pick up a little bit of my ultra blue and my violet. And since I got this, it's going to be a very similar sky to the last one, probably. Um, paint right along the top of this snow here. up a little bit of light <coughs> clouds there um, just to give it a little more interest in that sky since it's a lot of sky I want to come back and put just a little bit of my uh, <coughs> neutral tint in there in some areas see if I can get in a few a few little soft clouds soften the top edges 
and then get out of there and leave it alone. Something like that. Okay, sky is done. Now, <clears throat> take this big brush. I'm going to get us some gray. Blue and some burnt sienna. Okay, so that's some of the colors I want in the mountain, <clears throat> in the distant mountains back here. They're gray with snow <clears throat> falling down on them, and uh, they look more gray in the distance. They start getting more brown as you come toward me. So. I can always mix the blue and, the, and the, the brown together and get a gray. I can also add this neutral tint to get a gray. So let's see what we can do with this here. Like right in here we've got... It's too much. Too dark. A long ridge line of snow. I've kept this mountain below it. And that comes down to about here. And So the white you see there is snow. So I'm leaving a little ridge line of snow up there and just sort of pulling down and making my mountains. So I'm just using a flat side of the brush, pulling down. And leaving a rough edge at the bottom. Okay. Let's start on another mountain. Here we've got a little bit darker. I've got some few <coughs> globs of paint in my brush that I'm not crazy about, but let's pull this thing down here and see what it looks like. What's it looking like there? So you see when you paint watercolors you use the white paper for your snow. And this comes down. I don't want to get mixed up here now. darker brown here get some of this burnt <coughs> burnt umber in here it's 
So this mountain sort of goes up like this and has these little fingers of snow that sort of just pocket around in here. This is the, <clears throat> what I call the glacier here, where I'm painting around right here. We're getting a lot of Okay, I'm painting this mountain with a lot of snow sticking down. Over here, we've got gray and blue. Blue and <clears throat> brown make gray. So I'll have my own gray. Let's see, we're coming down here to these. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we got some nice snow coming down. I'll be able to put a little tone in there after a while and sort of show, show some shadows. Got another mountain over here. I'm going to change its color because I don't like using the same colors on both sides of the painting. I like a little bit for harmony, but I don't like to duplicate or replicate. <clears throat> so let's see here. Like now, we got a snow here. So come in here. That looks very similar to what I had on the other side. Get some change in there. Somebody asked me a question about Bob Ross, if he was my inspiration. I guess he was. Um, I started studying his painting methods before I started watercolors. And I 
actually my classes I taught some of his methods sort of modified it in my as I sort of matured my own painting style I uh, I like to work with um, sketches and Bob Ross really never used sketches very much I don't think he ever did actually um, so <clears throat> for me to sketch paint something like I did on that first watercolor today um, you really it's really very hard to do that without a sketch um, so I stopped putting the liquid white that Bob Ross uses on covering the entire canvas um, which is one of the things he always did and uh, so I changed my style a little bit and but I still use the liquid white because it's basically a very good way to uh, get uh, get some very nice soft effects with oil paints. Uh, you can paint very quickly with it and uh, get some very beautiful skies and things like that. So I uh, he was the one that sort of got me started painting. I guess I always wanted to try it. I took an oil painting class in 1976 or something, but I uh, couldn't really follow up on it. I had too much work to do and spent a lot of time in my career sort of getting an advanced degree and things like that. So it was kind of hard for me to focus on painting very much. But in 1995, I started back, looked at some of his old videos and I thought, boy, that's kind of neat. I've forgotten how much fun oil painting could be and I forgot how easy it was to sort of teach yourself. So I started it and uh, then I started putting YouTube videos up in 2012 and people started following me. And I started doing watercolor about the same time. I like the, uh, some of the effects you get with this watercolor. It's really hard to get some of those effects with oils. Um, but um, anyway, um, yeah, he was my inspiration. I've had a number of other watercolor painters that have become my inspiration as well. I follow um, Tony Couch. I've taken probably four workshops on t of Tony Couch, two workshops off of Sterling Edwards, one off of Tom Lynch. Uh, one off of Tony Van Hasselt. Um, so I've had quite a few watercolor workshops and almost no oil painting workshops. All right, let me stop and look at that a minute and see if it uh, looks like it's getting the kind of look I'm looking for. I have to stop and put my microphone back together again. I'm sorry, my... I hope that's not making any noise. I bet it is. I'm going to have to get me a new microphone. I think I keep losing the... Losing my... Uh, <clears throat> noise cover there, air cover, whatever it's called. Okay, I'm just going to put in a few little things here to sort of help define these mountains just a little. My um, palette is over here, so when I paint over there, i got to remember to move my palette. But right now, I'm okay. All right. <clears throat> So this is all snow, this is all glacier, this is all uh, a lot of bed of snow in there. And I'm going to leave it pretty much white. And I'll probably put a little tone on it to give it some shadows. But um, that's about it for the mountains. Um, I'm going to come in here now and start putting in some clear water. I'm going to put in some trees.
and uh, get some dark greens here going. Let's see. Take a little sap green, see what that looks like. That's a little. Take sap green and stick a little uh, dark sienna or dark uh, neutral tint rather with it, and you start getting a very deep evergreen color. I can take my blue and put some yellow with it, and I start getting a little bit different evergreen color. If you see the mixture in the palette, you see two different two different uh, colors coming to life here: one with sap green and neutral tint, and one with uh, one with um, blue, ultra blue, and primary yellow. So I want to take some of these and throw in some trees here, see if I can get some really dark stuff going. I've got some snow right here I'm going to leave room for. These things come all the way down. i got to get some more paint out here. Need more paint. There might even be a little snow on the ground down here some. Uh, Now, where's my peninsula? Out here. Change the color, pick up some yellow, lighten it up. Let's see, here's my Peninsula. There's my second peninsula. I want to make sure I don't lose that peninsula there. So I'm just sort of feeling my way here with this since I've lost a lot of my sketch. some paint running down here. This isn't not too descript over here. I'm just sort of going to leave it filled in. I'll come back and put a few darks over the top of that. That's not dark. So we have a lot of snow here. <clears throat> I'm at leaving more snow in this watercolor than is actually in the photograph. The photograph is all sort of blocked out, blacked out. Or it's okay, so I got a little row of trees here that Okay, <clears throat> now I've got another whole row of trees that go back here behind this water. <clears throat> There's a lake here. So let's see, let's make those just a little bluer. They're back further, they're a little smaller. 
I'll see if I can. So far, folks, I've only used this one inch brush. some dark here put a few more dark things in here like this come back and put a some other colors in there but <clears throat> put a layer of those along there we'll come back and pick up some of this blue So I'm just mixing almost <clears throat> on the paper here, um, mixtures of blue and going in some green. So I just have this whole set of trees over here. I'm just filling in, covering up the darks help give me some nice depth in the uh, Okay, stop and take a look at that and see what that's looking like. Okay, so far we've been 30 minutes on this painting almost. Um, that's why I think with the watercolor <clears throat> classes I can sometimes do more than one painting because sometimes you get a landscape like this and it can really go fast. Just blur this out over here. Minimal. Okay, there's that. The darks over here, put a few more trees in over here that could be shorter. Too much white in there. I want to maybe take some of that out. This little sharp edge here. Okay. Um, could scrape in a couple of trees, maybe. I don't know. There's a, as long as that. paint is wet you scrape through it you'll pull it out and it'll look light if it's too dry you won't get anything if it's too wet it just fills back in and does not show anything all right so this is going to be water here all the way back there I'm gonna have another little tree right in front of it water around here and some more trees and then just put in some shadows on my mountains and uh, be done um, so I think it's time to do the water this water I got to get a little bit of area here to work I don't want to lose all these colors because I'm gonna need them for a little bit more of that foreground so I'm gonna just clean myself off a section of my palette and get me some Water has no color, right? You've heard me say that before, maybe. Um, it only reflects what's above it or 
what's around it or what's under it <coughs> but has no real color of its own. So we make water by wetting the paper. It's all going to be water unless I cover it up. Okay, water, it's some of the color of the sky, a little bit of the uh, color of the mountain, and so I've wet that, now I'm just going to pull down, I use almost the same technique in oils, picking up that color that's in the background a little bit, pulling it down, some brown in there. Make it look a little more realistic. Brown over here maybe. This over here is going to be sort of brown. This is a okay. See how fast we done we've done this painting? I just painted over that and I didn't let you see underneath there, did I? Sorry folks. <laughs> My left brain and right brain get tangled up. Sometimes I don't uh, remember to back up while that's drying and see if we can put just a few shadows in some of this snow up here when we get a real light wash of neutral tint a lot of water
Okay, so does that look like a little glacier coming down? Let this dry a little bit more. I think I'm going to put in a few more dark trees here if I can get some more. Okay. Oh, I'll put a couple more down here maybe just to give it a little bit of a completion look. <clears throat> okay, folks. Less than 45 minutes. So you have a nice snow scene that's got a lot of water, a lot of mountain. It's got a glacier floating down there. The shadows probably could have just a little more brown in some of those shadows. Let's see here, take a little burnt sienna. These areas in the back could use just a little more rough texture, maybe, I don't know. They're in shadow, too, in some of these areas. Okay, better stop before I make it worse. Okay, I think with that, I'm going to back myself up here and say, I think that's about all for today, folks. I'm uh, glad you tuned in, and thank you for watching, and uh, look for my next watercolor workshop on the third Wednesday in June. So I'll put that on your calendar, and uh, I look forward to seeing you then. Until I uh, see you again, uh, it's Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.